Comic books have a unique way to expose people to new worlds or even new perspectives. Visual, exciting, story-driven, comics pull people in. And when done right, it can get the reader to think or even learn something new. All because of a funny book. Today's episode, I talk with artist and writer Sean Martinbro about comics, the Milestones exhibit, and how a project he's currently working on is preserving history in a very artful way. Let's go. My name is Sean Martinbro. I have been an uh, illustrator, uh, professional illustrator since 1992. Before that, I've been drawing pretty much since elementary school. I went to the High School of Music and Art, which is the basis for the Fame movie. I got my degree, in, uh, my bachelor's of fine arts degree in illustration at the School of Visual Arts. While I was a junior at SVA, I got my first work from Marvel Comics in 1992. And fortunately, I've been working as a professional artist since then. Now, you went from Marvel and you actually worked on Batman as well, mm -hmm. and which that's one of the, the most iconic characters of all time. So that, how did that feel when you got that call? Well, that was, it was really great because, um, you know, to, like, to think about your kid from the Bronx drawing one of the most iconic characters in the world, it's, it's awesome. And when I was approached to draw detective comics and, and I was the regular, you know, I was going to be the regular artist on that series. It was amazing, you know, and I was really excited about the project and I, I, I was really humbled and just, let's do it. So we're in the Milestone exhibit. Uh, could you talk about this? Sure, absolutely. Milestones was the brainchild of Michael Davis, Tatiana, and the president of the museum, Missy Jeppy Bauer Sucks. They wanted to do a representation of African Americans in comics, pop culture, and beyond. So Michael Davis and Tatiana, using their connections, got us a whole bunch of outstanding contemporary artists, uh, John Jennings, Sean Martinborough, uh, Don McGregor. The idea is generally just to bring together a collection of African American artists and people who produce uh, notable works in the history of African American comic characters. Milestone Comics created the Milestone Universe in 1993. But why is it significant? It's because Milestone Comics was created by a group of African American writers and authors in a time when they felt like minorities were underrepresented in comics. Published through DC, they opened up the comic book world to perspectives mostly only seen in independent comics. While Milestone Comics only published until 1997, in 2008, DC merged the Milestone universe into its own, continuing the legacy. You are a part of Jeppy's Milestone exhibit. Mm -hmm. If somebody was to go see it, what would you want them to pull out of it? I probably would say that it's important for people to see that people of color are working in the industry. It's, it's amazing when I have like, you know, young black, you know, boys or girls come up to me and say, wow, you know, you draw comics? That's great. I didn't know that someone who looks like me draws comics. And then that's a really profound um, experience to have because it just says that I can do it too. Is there any other projects you're working on that people should check out? Thief of Thieves is my primary project that I'm working on. It's a monthly series and so that's my, my main responsibility to do. There is a project I'm very excited about. It's called The Wren and it's set in the Harlem Renaissance uh, and, and it's going to be published by First Second Books. I am co-writing it with Joe Illage um, and the artwork is going to be done by a phenomenal artist named Gray Williamson. And the way we pitched it to First Second Books, it's fame meets Boardwalk Empire set in the Harlem Renaissance. Now that's it's it's a fictional story but it's set in a factual time yes so which is very fun but also very challenging because we are 
sort of working around real historical events, okay. but plugging our fictional characters into it. Why that time period? What drew you to do this? Joe and I felt that um, it's a period in time that I think deserves to, to get more of a spotlight. And I think um, it was a really influential time. It was a very important time in terms of creativity for America and a time where you had a lot of black artists and writers and it was like an explosion of just uh, creativity. And I think that that's an important time to um, showcase. There's that perfect way of exposing somebody to history without mm -hmm. actually saying, here's message. the history. Yeah, you don't want to be like, message. You, yeah. don't want to hit them, you don't want to hit them over the head. You want to sort of give, give your history lesson in a very entertaining way where people say, oh, wait, I didn't realize that this was a history lesson. And hopefully by our characters interacting with other historical characters and in, 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 in this really important time in Harlem, it would inspire people to sort of say, oh, hey, let me look more into that part of, uh, that, that part of American history. And do you have any other projects that anybody should check out? I always recommend people check out my art instruction book called How to Draw Noir, The Art and Technique of Visual Storytelling. It's published by Random House many times over the years. I w have been approached by men, women, mothers, fathers saying, hey, you know, I have a son or I have a daughter that, that loves comics or they love to draw and I'm not really sure, you know, um, what I should do to, you know, really support that. I saw the book for um, as a, a great way to not only let people know about how I got into comics and how I became an artist, and it's also a way to sort of let people know how I visualize things and okay. how I apply my, my sense of style to storytelling. So it's a great book. From superheroes to zombies to over-the-top spies, we've been through a lot this season. We've explored the Museum of Entertainment, waded through the masses at Baltimore Comic Con, and were even invited into an artist studio. And through all that, you know what I learned? that sometimes history can be hiding right in front of you, even in your hands. Next season, I'm going to show you a little bit different side of history. It's weirder, a little magical, but it's always incredible. So I'll see you next season on History at Risk.